Welcome to Vineyard Hopkinton. As we follow Jesus together, we experience the Holy Spirit, create a multicultural community, and pursue kingdom of God justice. You know, <coughs> it is common to believe in it is common to believe in the idea of God. It is not common to truly believe in God. What do I mean? We all have opinions, preferences, uh, ideas. We have good ideas like hay rides and hot apple cider. And we have bad ideas like, please tell me the uh, pumpkin spice Cheerios are bad. Uh, I mean, I haven't had them. Maybe I would love them. But we have good ideas and bad ideas. We have opinions that we hold strongly to. God is not an idea. God is way beyond our opinions, thoughts, imaginations, preferences. He's a reality. He's a force. He's, he's a person. What we think or don't think about God does not change God. But he can change us. And this morning, as we've been looking in the book of Corinthians, this letter uh, to, to a church that I just, I love it. It's short, it's succinct, it's to the point. It's Jesus wins everything and we get to be on his team. As we come to this section in Colossians today, God changes us because God has come to the earth in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. He has lived with us. He has died for us and he has risen for us. God is not an idea. He's a person, and he changes everything. So let's pray, and then we're going to dig into our scripture today. Jesus, today we say, in me, just little old regular me, would you come and do your work? As we know, as we trust somehow that that you can do abundantly more above and beyond all that we can ask or imagine. God, you are our creator. You knit us together in our mother's womb uh, in areas and ways we don't understand about ourselves. You can bring transformation. And Jesus, you love us. You really, really do. So we open our hearts and our minds to your work today. We set aside our ideas and our opinions for the truth of your word. Would you speak powerfully to us today in your holy scripture, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to be in Colossians chapter 3. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not just the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires? No. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. But now, now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, dirty language, Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off. You have stripped off all your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you're Jew or you're Gentile, uh, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbaric or civilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters, and he lives in all of us. Since God shows you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, 
Clothe yourself in love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill up your life. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. Amen. Amen. We can live, and living is both thinking and our actions, a life that's with Jesus, uh, that's set on heavenly things. But that does require saying no to some earthly things. We are told to here, kill the old sinful and choose the new, the way that is, which is open to anyone. Jew or Gentile, your religious background, male, female, yes, you go for it. Seek, set your mind on things above your real life is there. Select, grab what God has provided, forgiveness, kindness, love, and peace and gratitude will be the result. Well, guys, uh, as we start this morning, you know, I mentioned with the board, you know, we just have, we have a great church, and um, I really like all of you, and um, I have a um, Dunkin' Donuts gift card. I'd really just like to hang out with, with one of you after church if you're around for a little bit, um, grab a cup of coffee real quick. Who, who would like to go with me after church and get some, uh, wow, such an eager hand. Lily, thank you for saying yes to me. Beautiful, wonderful. Here you go. Yes, seriously. Thank you for saying yes. Um, Lily, so I was going to offer to take you to whatever restaurant you want for lunch. Oh. What do you think about that? Which one's better? You want to go? You want to take my offer, don't you? You, you want mine. I mean, basically, right? What's your favorite restaurant? I know. What, top five. We could just flip a coin. I mean, we could do whatever you want. <laughs> All right. Well, Lily, did you have any idea when you said yes to me, you would have to say no to Stephen? No. no, you did not. You did not. Thank you for playing and being such a good sport, Lily. Um, that was fun. Uh, speaking of fun um, medieval philosophy, they had uh, this dictum that uh, every choice is a renunciation. Every choice is a renunciation. When Lily said yes to me, she had no idea she was saying no to a different offer. Um, when I said yes to marrying Stephen, I was also saying no to thousands of other men. I mean, <laughs> he is the singular marriage proposal I've ever managed to secure, but theoretically, um, Ross, you just said yes to a new job. Congratulations. You also did say no to a couple others. Mm -hmm. And should a headhunter show up on Monday morning with a great offer, you should probably say no to it. Um, when I sign up my kids for Friday night basketball, I am canceling family game night. When I spend a weekend with my parents, I am not spending that with my kids. When you said yes to having a baby, you were saying no to some career opportunities, weekends in wine country and sleeping in. When you said yes to taking four AP courses, you were saying no to relaxing weekends fun afternoons with your friends, and again, sleeping in. When I say yes to Netflix, I'm saying no to prayer. When you say yes to Sunday brunch, you're saying no to Sunday church. We have a lot of choices to make. A lot of yeses and nos. The average grocery store in the U.S. carries over 200 different types of cereal. It's not even the only thing we eat for breakfast, guys. There's oatmeal. There's, you know, uh, 
ketchup. Boy, there's omelets, yes. And that is a better choice. Speaking of good choices. Um, ketchup, maybe mashed up tomatoes with sodium and sugar, but Price Chopper has 13 different options. Netflix currently has over 3,600 movies and 1,800 TV shows, and there's still nothing good to watch. <laughs> Where to live? What job to take? UMass Amherst has over 100 and di 120 different majors just to get you started. How are we supposed to choose? Researchers did a scientific study on jams and jellies. The University of Columbia, they set up two booths. One had 24 different options at this gourmet California marketplace. The other had only six. And understandably, the one with more options was more popular. 60% of folks stopped there. Between the two sites, if you stopped, everyone got two samples. Everyone who got samples was then presented with a $1 off coupon to incentivize continuing this process into purchasing. But even though the more samples was more popular, only 3% there purchased something versus the smaller selection had a 30% purchase rate. This shows us that while, uh, for the researchers, while more options is appealing, Ultimately, it leads to choice paralysis and can be overwhelming. I think these guys did the study wrong. They should have done it with ice cream. Because, <laughs> let me tell you, I have been to ice cream shops with 50, 100 different choices, and it may have taken me a while. I may have had more than two samples. But let me tell you, in the end, 3%, 30%, ha, I ordered ice cream every single time. But how are we supposed to choose? What God does in Jesus is he puts out the best sample. He gives us one choice, and it is flavorful and varied and expansive and, and good for a diverse eye. He gives us one choice, his best in Jesus, and that's what we say yes to. Here's what he puts on the table for us. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. Your real life is hidden with Christ. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew, Gentile, educated or not, servant or CEO, Christ is all that matters, and he lives in all of us. God shows you as the holy people he loves, the Lord forgave you, and the peace that comes from Christ can rule in your hearts. The good choice, the best choice, is gotten for us by Jesus, and it's the heavenly realities. Now, St. Paul, when He's writing this letter to, you know, his particular church that he's overseeing. Paul, he doesn't start with earth and then kind of move his way up to heaven. He starts with the victory of Jesus. He starts with the reality of heaven, and then he lets that inform how we should live here on earth. He starts with the guarantees and then we look into the fine print of how this works out. He starts with the eternal realities and then moves on to the temporary situations. In our own life, are we making, the, are we making earth shape heaven or are we letting heaven shape our earth? The things of God are what are true and eternal. They last forever. They have power far beyond what's right in front of us here and now. Think about, think about one problem you have right now. Whatever's on the to-do list, nagging at you, finances, school, whatever it is. You got it? Named it? That will not last forever. It will be over. It is temporary. Uh, in grad school, I lived in 
It was a nice three-story house that the school owned, very, very close to the campus. And uh, one day, I was, uh, I was in the bathroom doing my face wash and moisturizers, wh- whatever it was. You know, now it's a little bit more about wrinkles. Back then, it was a little bit more about acne, but I'm, I'm doing my thing. And all of a sudden, the biggest cockroach you have ever seen runs across the bathroom floor. I mean, I'm in my zone, but this thing was, it was huge right across. You know what I did? I did my moisturizers. I did my skincare because I looked at that cockroach and I said, cockroach, I am just renting you. Come May, we are breaking up. I do not own you. You are not my responsibility. I will text my landlord about you when it is convenient for me. I was just renting. The Bible says you are raised. You are raised to new life. These things, they do not claim you. You you are not owned and controlled by the problems of this world. You are renting them. You are not claimed and owned by the things of this world. Therefore, since you have been raised with Christ, Keep seeking the things above where Christ is seated on his throne. What things? Things around Jesus. What's Jesus like? He's victorious. He's won. Think and act on things that go along with, that can coexist with Jesus. If not, we throw it in the garbage. If not, we take it out back and kill it. So put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you have nothing to do, nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater worshiping the things of this world. Friends, you can do way better than worship cars and, you know, new house. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of the wor- this world. But now, now is the time to get rid of anger, get rid of rage, get rid of malicious behavior, slander, dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Let's move on to talk about some of the no's this morning. Friends, when, uh, when I was younger, and my illustrations this morning are very girly, when I was younger, I wore high heels all the time. My claim to fame is that I climbed the Great Wall of China three times wearing high heels. Other foreigners, they were in their sneakers, and I may or may not have had a little sun parasol, as was the way, don't judge me. Um, when I started teaching, and standing for hours and hours on end, I realized, maybe years later than I should have, that high heels no longer fit my life. They no longer belonged in my life. They were no longer compatible with my life. What is not compatible with a life that is centered around Jesus? What doesn't fit? What can't go in the same room as Jesus? This says, um, broad categories, wants and words, or sex and speech. Starve those impulses in you that say, I want pleasure from, from people. I want, I want you to make me feel good. Feed, feed this image of myself. Run away from anything that sees women or men as objects instead of complex people made in the image of God. Don't give social media or Netflix or pornography any place in your life to make you greedy towards people instead of generous and accepting and loving. This list, it's about more and it's about me, my pleasures, my my feelings, my want to relax, my desires, my fantasies. 
I mean, lies, lies are fantasies. Lies are the self-delusions we, we feed our, ourselves. Little lies steal our contentment with what we actually have. Lies are cowardly. They don't claim the reality before us. The truth is courageous. Falsehoods are, are weak and cowardly. But we can use our words to get our wants. Those little words, those little lies, those little to get our wants, to make us feel better. We need to monitor for greed because other people will always have better stuff. And it used to be that we compared ourselves to our neighbors. Maybe back in the 80s or 90s, you rode your bike around the neighborhood, you saw who had a big screen TV, Driving around your neighborhood, Mr. So-and-so got a nice new car. But within your neighborhood, it's generally roughly a similar economic status. Now we don't compare ourselves to our own neighbors. We compare ourselves to our neighbors in our pockets. On Zillow, on Instagram, on Bravo and HTTV. And the comparison is way bigger. And we think, Oh, it's just daydreaming, it's just window shopping. I just like looking, it's, I'm admiring it. But admiration is one short step from jealousy. We don't wanna admire stuff. We wanna admire character and beauty. We don't want pleasure or popularity. We want goodness. We wanna worship God above all else, being honest and clear-minded about who we are and the good things we already have. Friends, I think this list in uh, Colossians 3, I think it's just plain good life advice. You know what is not good life advice? Oh, it's just a little white lie. It's normal. It's fine. You can get away with it. Uh, a little bit of lust won't hurt. This, this probably won't come back to bite you in the butt. This is good life advice. I think about, and this is not bad life advice or anything, but um, my first spiritual director, this is a while ago, um, I said to her, it's like 15 years ago, I, I said to her, you know, I really, I feel like my prayer life is anemic and I, I want to pray more. And she looked at me and said, oh, Sarah, I think you pray, pray plenty. I said, hmm, I should probably fire you. Um, and she, she was good for many things and helpful and I, it's not like I walked out of there and uh, broke up with her uh, later on email. I, I said, she was good for something, but I was like, I'm telling you that I want more with God, and you're telling me just, oh, it's fine, it's normal. When people tell you things are fine and normal, that is not the green light that some people think it is. When the Bible says flee temptation, that is smart. Stay in the clear all the way. Don't mess with the stress. Flee temptation before you get tangled up. You know, I say, say no to one so that you may say yes to what's better. The Bible is a little starker in their uh, phrasing. Uh, it says, kill the, the, the bad. Shoot it dead in the head so it is not around to influence you. So that the only thing living and breathing around you is what is good and pure. And it is the reality, friends, that if we want to live in the same place as Jesus, that place of victory and love, we have to say no to some things so that we can say yes to others. Say yes to tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience making allowance for others' faults, forgiving anyone who offends you. Remember, God forgave me. I better forgive you. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. I can let peace 
rule my heart and thankfulness. This is all God's grace. God accomplishes this in us when we just give him a chance. When we just give him a chance. This is, this is a promise for breakthrough in our life, not, not a to-do list, because God does it when we give him a chance. Henry Nouwen, a uh, great Catholic uh, ministry leader and author, he got to spend some time with Mother Teresa. And when you get to spend some time with Mother Teresa, you want to get everything out of it. And, uh, and he, he knew his weaknesses, and uh, he, he knew that his promise and potential. So he said, you know, Mother Teresa, like, you know, what must I do to be a good Christian leader? What, can, what do I have to do? And Mother Teresa told him, spend one hour a day in adoration. Never do anything you know to be wrong. Ah, oh, Henry, you'll be all right. Not all of us here are in vocational ministry. The hour part might be tweaked, though it might not. For many of us, we could easily do an hour. Um, never do anything you know to be wrong, and you'll be all right. I just, I love the simplicity of that. She doesn't say, oh, sainthood, Henry, let me tell you the secrets. She's just saying, you'll be all right. And I think that's a word for us. Adore Jesus. Never do anything you know to be wrong. And you'll be all right. C.S. Lewis said it this way. He said, it is not your business to secede, but to do right. We should be much more concerned with doing right, much less concerned with seceding, because God will take care of the rest, guaranteed. I want to end this morning... Um, if you see around you, you've got some little slips of paper, um, pencils. I may or may not have enough. If you brought a purse that has a pen, utilize that. Uh, but on this little slip, I've got a graphic up here too. I want us to spend just a couple of minutes saying today, what do I need to say no to so that God will fill me with what he wants me to say yes to. In my life, what do I need to put aside? What do I need to reject? What do I need to give God a chance with, to fill me up with? What's he calling me into? We cannot run around saying yes to everything, saying yes to money and work and social expectations and yes to living the same as every other family and not think that we will still have a yes left over for Jesus. We won't. It's not realistic. We need to save our best yeses, our biggest yeses for Jesus the love, the mercy, the thankfulness, the peace, the purpose that he's filling up in us. And we have to always choose to choose God all over again. This morning, what are we saying yes to? Jesus, I pray that my deepest and best yes is for you, we make space, Jesus, for you to work in us, your great exchange. That you fill us up and you smash out of us. You kill the old and you bring in your new. So friends, this morning I want to just give us a minute in the presence of God in the company of friends, just write down a couple of things. What's God calling you to? Let me uh, grab one here, if I may. Worship team, if you guys want to come on up.
Maybe God is calling you in, in your life to peace. And maybe that means saying no to doing everything. Maybe God is calling you to prayer and that involves some no's to social media. Maybe it's victory and God overcoming some things, but for that you've got to say no to some striving and some complaining. You know, I think for some of us today, we have to, we have to put off and we have to like kill some work and, and performance things. God wants to give us peace. And we are like, why am I so stressed all, all the time? I'm so stressed out. It's because you're just claiming and owning uh, all, all of this, this performance and work and worry. I want to lay that aside and say yes to the peace and the patience that God has for us. Maybe it's thankfulness. And there's some greed in us that has to die for that to happen. As we, as we think on this, friends, here's the bottom line. A no in the power of God is as good as any yes. A no from God that is clear and thought out, that is powerful and held to, is as yes, is as good as the fiercest yes, the strongest yes. When we say, God, take this. I'm done with it. That just opens up wide expanses in the kingdom of God for us. That is as good as the strongest yes. It just opens things up for us. So I think that's Jesus' invitation to us today. And when some of these things are put aside, thrown in the trash, that there is power and there is victory because we are opening ourselves up the closed door is an opening for what God wants to do in us. So let's stand together today, guys. We're going to move into a time of worship. If you have other things that maybe the Holy Spirit is just kind of nodding, prompting, nudging, whispering, just jot them down. I always find that writing things down helps me. Maybe it doesn't, so just don't if it's not helpful to you. But remember it. Value it. We don't want to have odd impressions that we then forget by Monday morning. When God whispers to us, that's gold. And we guard it, we savor it, we ponder it. Jesus, this morning, we submit ourselves to your work, Jesus taking off the old, putting on the new. Taking off, not focusing on the earthly, but setting our sights on what you have for us in the heavenly places. Not being focused on the stress, the anxiety, uh, the, the again and again of here, but living our lives with the victory that you have already won. As we fight our battles, that song is per perfect. As we fight our battles, you have already won the victory. And we get to live in a victorious way here and now. So Jesus, thank you for what you are doing and what you speak to us, Jesus. We will guard and guide and steward and live out for your honor and your glory. Amen. Let's worship.